When we think of World War I air aces, we probably think about the Red Baron, Mick Manock or Eddie Rickenbacker, men who duelled with other flyers over the trenches of France and Flanders in Fokker triplanes, Newports and Sopwith camels, racking up kills and decorations. It was fearfully dangerous work in the basic aircraft of the era, their planes flimsy contraptions of wood and fabric, and parachutes were not commonly used. In order to become a flying ace, you had to have shot down five enemy aircraft in aerial combat. Aces were extremely rare, and few survived the war. The highest scoring pilot was a German, Manfred Freiherr von Richthofen, forever immortalized as the Red Baron, due to the garish color he painted his various aircraft. He racked up an incredible 80 official kills before his death in 1918, aged just 25, ironically killed by ground fire from Australian troops. But there was another type of aerial ace almost completely forgotten, the balloon buster. They were a fearless breed of flyers, many of them also aircraft aces as well, that shot down observation balloons over the front lines, a job that was even more dangerous than duelling with enemy aircraft due to the fact that their targets were effectively giant flying bombs that could only be destroyed up close, and they were well protected by anti-aircraft weapons, these attacks being made at relatively low altitudes, placing pilots in terrible danger from concentrated ground fire. So why bother? The answer was simple. The tethered observation balloon was of vital importance in World War I. Unlike aircraft, which flew reconnaissance missions over the enemy lines taking photographs, Observation balloons remained in contact with the ground via a telephone link. The observer in the basket could direct artillery fire and report enemy troop movements in real time, relaying information constantly to allow artillery guns to correct or plans to be immediately altered. Early observation planes couldn't do this, as workable air-to-ground radios were only in their infancy. However, later in the war, this technology was fitted to some aircraft. Using military balloons as observation platforms was nothing new in World War I. They had first appeared in the French Revolutionary Wars in 1794 and saw extensive use in the American Civil War and the 1870-71 Franco-Prussian War. The British used them in Central Africa in the Victorian era and in the Second Boer War of 1899-1902 in South Africa. But World War I was the first time that balloons could be intercepted and destroyed from the air. A balloon could remain aloft for hours, whereas planes needed to refuel often. Balloons remained a thorn in the side of both the Axis and the Allies in World War I, and before any offensive, Squadrons of aircraft would be sent aloft in an attempt to destroy as many of these flying spies as possible. Another advantage with balloons over aircraft at the time was their ability to still fly in poor weather or low cloud cover. As wireless technology improved later in the war, aircraft became more effective spotters, able to see further into enemy territory by simply flying into it and report again in real time but the tethered balloon still remained useful in artillery spotting and general reconnaissance. The problem faced by both the Axis and the Central Powers was developing practical methods for destroying the balloon without also destroying the attacking aircraft as well. Firstly, let's look at the operation of the balloons. The balloon was made of fabric without any internal frame, unlike an airship that consisted of a lightweight metal frame covered with fabric, inside which were cells filled with gas. This meant that the balloon was easy to transport to the front on special trucks. Below the balloon was suspended a wicker basket in which the observer stood, and he used binoculars or a naval telescope for observation, and was, as I said, able to communicate with the ground by telephone. The balloon could be winched up to several thousand feet, giving a wide and long vista of observation. Sometimes the observation basket was equipped with a light machine gun for defence against aircraft. 
But unlike attacking aircraft pilots of the period, balloon observers wore parachutes. If the balloon was attacked, the observer would bail out of the basket. His parachute release connected to the basket, and as he fell, his parachute would deploy, as with static line parachuting today. No reserve chute was carried. Balloon positions were well protected. Machine guns were set up for anti-aircraft defence, and the balloon units were sometimes protected by anti-aircraft artillery batteries as well. Sometimes, friendly fighters would patrol the skies near the balloons to engage approaching enemy aircraft. Ideally, the enemy aircraft would be spotted early and the balloon winched down before it could be engaged or the observer forced to jump. Apart from ground fire and protecting fighters, any potential balloon buster faced the thorny issue of how to actually shoot down a balloon. Normal machine gun bullets would puncture the balloon, causing its gas to escape and it would simply sink slowly to the ground and could be easily repaired and returned to service. In order to combat German airships, called Zeppelins, that bombed England from 1915 onwards, the Allies developed incendiary bullets. Like the Zeppelin, the observation balloon, for reasons of economy, were filled with hydrogen, a highly flammable gas that had a disconcerting habit of exploding in a fireball when shot by incendiary ammunition. But this was a double-edged sword, for although very vulnerable to such destruction, the balloon buster had to get very close to the balloon due to the range of the machine guns used on World War I biplane fighters and risk being destroyed by the resulting explosion of the gas bag, not to mention the likelihood of being shot to bits by ground fire. For this reason, the fighter pilots that toyed with observation balloons were considered to have a giant wealth of intestinal fortitude and really earned the name Balloon Buster. As with aircraft kills, to be a balloon busting ace, the pilot needed five kills minimum. The highest scoring balloon buster of World War I was Belgian. Willy Coppens shot down 35 balloons and three German aircraft, receiving hapfuls of high decorations from his own country and many others, including Britain's Distinguished Service Order and Military Cross and the French Croix de Guerre, showing how important his work was to the Allied war effort generally. In one extraordinary attack at close range, the German observer fired at Coppens with a machine gun from his basket, Coppens actually landed his Unreo HD-1 aircraft on top of the balloon and switched off his engine. As the balloon descended, Coppens' aircraft slid off and he restarted his engine and flew safely away. The Germans took to booby-trapping balloons with huge explosive charges so that after the observer jumped clear, a remotely detonated and massive explosion would also bring down the attacking plane. On Coppin's last mission, he downed a balloon but lost a leg to machine gun fire. This didn't deter him from many adventures, and in 1928 he set a world parachute jump record from 19,700 feet that stood for four years, and in World War II was active in the Belgian resistance. Coppin's died in 1986, aged 94. Top French balloon ace was Léon Bourgeard, with 27 balloon kills and one German aircraft. The top German balloon buster was aristocrat Friedrich Ritter von Rutt, who bagged 20 Allied balloons and 8 aircraft. The highest scoring British Commonwealth ace was South African Andrew Beecham Proctor, who downed 16 balloons and 38 aircraft and received the Victoria Cross for his efforts. America's top balloon buster was Frank Luke Jr., who received the Medal of Honor for destroying 14 balloons and four aircraft in action. If you think the humble observation balloon disappeared after World War I, think again. They were used extensively on the Eastern Front in World War II by both the Germans and the Soviets. and have lingered on into the 21st century. Called aerostats, they are used by the United States. The tethered aerostat radar system provides downward-looking radar coverage, are used to counter illegal drug trafficking and radar surveillance along the border with Mexico and the Straits of Florida and in the Caribbean. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share.
Please also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.